I want to welcome to The Long Road. My name is Chris Roberts. I'm here with our special guest, Liz. Hi, I'm Liz Coppola. I'm the Development Director at the Keene Family YMCA. And Bob? I'm Bob Oberlander. I'm the Chair of the Building Committee for the Keene Family YMCA. And um, <clears throat> before we go out to our, our on-site video, before you get anything done, you have to have a vision. Whose vision was it to, to, to build a new YMCA? Bob, I'll let you answer that question. You know, there's no one person who can claim that. Uh, and this vision started a long time ago. And uh, I've been working on this project for a little over five years. And it started a good three or four years before I was uh, came onto the Y board. But a lot of people, Joanne Fenton, Bob Clarkson, uh, previous directors, all saw the need uh, for a new facility. We had outgrown our facility and we're having um, difficulties maintaining it and with the structure of the facility. So there's uh, a lot of people that came together to get us to this point. And YMCA is, is always a community <clears throat> organization. And I gather the community has really got together behind this. Yeah, d definitely. When, when this work began probably seven or eight years ago, um, to really look at our options, whether to renovate the existing Y or build a new Y, um, there was a series of community kind of feasibility interviews to find out um, what level in of interest there was in the YMCA in general and what level of interest there was in really supporting a major project, again, whether it was renovating or building new. Um, and those early feasibility studies demonstrated a very strong level of support for the Y <clears throat> and for continuing to support it moving forward. Okay, before we go on with this, we'll go out and show the short film, the on-site of where, we're, where you're beginning your new building. Mm -hmm. I'm here with Liz Coppola and Bob. Bob say? Oberlander. Yes. Bob Oberland. Liz, this is a little bit different than the school board. It sure is. And can you tell the, the audience what's your role in the new YMCA? Sure. I am the Director of Development for the Keene Family YMCA. I have been on board for about two years, working hard and waiting very patiently for this day of groundbreaking, which finally happened two weeks ago. Bob Oberlander is our new building committee chair. He has been working for five years on this project, doing a phenomenal job. And we are here today to show you the site and um, talk a little bit about what the new building is going to be like. Bob, we were here about, was it about 18 months ago when we had our little shovels doing the groundbreaking? I bet you thought you'd be much farther along in that 18 months. Yeah, that well, was two years ago. You know, almost these, two years ago. These have been tough times um, in the financial world, and uh, sometimes the best laid plans don't always go according to schedule, but um, sometimes good things come out of bad, and uh, despite the delays we had, uh, we finally uh, put this project out for general bid and uh, got some excellent results, and we're fortunate to have uh, the McMillan Company um, as our contractor building this building. And I heard that the, the price was much lower than you thought it was. Yeah, a lot happened. Uh, the price that we had in uh, January of 2009, um, a lot's happened with the economy and there are a lot of very uh, aggressive contractors out there and uh, in the process of converting from the construction management agreement we had, um, to the general bid scenario, which was a requirement of the USDA, um, we were able to achieve almost a $2 million reduction uh, in the cost of the building. Now, there were some additional costs to um, change from construction management to general bid, but um, we were uh, very pleased with the result, and uh, um, it actually made it uh, a lot more uh, feasible for us to be out standing here right now and starting construction. So. Yeah, um, I know you, we got the loan, you got the loan from the Department of Agriculture. Can you explain a little bit to the public? Because they're going to say, well, this is not the Department of Agriculture, this is recreation. What would be the connection? Well, it's rural development, and rural development um, wants to see areas grow, and their primary uh, driving factor here was um, two things. Uh, one was childcare. 
and the other was the programming that's going to occur in the, in the new watt. And uh, um, they, uh, yeah, even though it's a, an old farm field, um, it's uh, being uh, used to increase uh, the wise presence in the community and uh, hopefully uh, um, enable uh, people who don't normally use the Y to have increased access to the Y, which uh, they were they're very interested in. So. You just talked about two important things, child care, and the other thing is defining obesity and overall wellness, and just not for the, the kids, but also for the elderly. Can you explain how this is going to help? Sure. I, I think one of the uh, most exciting <laughs> Uh, components of our new building is that it will be fully handicap accessible. I know, Chris, you are a member of the Y at 38 Roxbury Street. We have 11 stairwells, no four levels, and no elevator. So anybody with any kind of physical limit, limitation is has a very difficult time in our current facility and, frankly, isn't there because of it. The new Y is going to be two levels um, with the pool and the gymnasium and the basketball courts, most of the main areas on the, the first floor, there will be an elevator to the second floor. And because of that, we will be able to reach out to a, a much bigger population in terms of providing services. Another feature of the new Y will be a clerical door. So we will be able to um, work with elderly or anyone get injured and they go to the hospital or the clinic for therapy, but sometimes their insurance says you only get 6 or 12 and the person's not recovered, so the person can't afford the therapy, so now they'll be able to come to the right. Y. And, and, and we have been working very closely with Cheshire Medical, Cheshire Medical <laughs> Center, and they are very excited about the new Y. Um, they've told us they already have a list of you know potential what, once we're open. Um, patients who yep. have run out of time at their service. So would you be thinking about working with the King State College, the physical therapy, the athletic trainers? They would need their social service and get those hours in for certification. That's a good idea. I don't think we've explored that, but thanks for Because I know with the, the King Senior Center is working with the students of nutrition, geriatrics, and phys physical activities because they have to do those hours and, and the kids love being right. active. Yeah, that'll be a great so it's getting a little windy, and I know, like you said, we just started two weeks. You just started two weeks ago. So can Bob? Can you explain to the um, viewers what's going on behind us? Sure. Um, we uh, came in, uh, and McMillan started. Um, they got the, the green light, and uh, you know we've been working for a long time. This process, uh, we said before, has been going on for five years. Um, you know, there, we went through all the channels with the city of Keene, and uh, fortunately, we were ready and had our building permit right away, so there wasn't any any time lost. But what you see um, off to my right here is um, the old farming field that uh, the first thing we had to do was go in and remove a bunch of uh, the topsoil. There's about a foot and a half of topsoil that's already been stockpiled over to the right side there um, so that uh, we can bring in uh, other soils. The building level has to come up about three and a half feet off grade now. So and the building's kind of back to the right there, um, to the left of those trucks where the darker soil is that you can see there. So that they've already uh, stripped the soil off. They're starting to bring in new soil that they're going to compact and raise the grade there. Um, a few trees have been removed, as you can see off here to the left. Um, part of this process that the Y went through um, had to deal with the traffic patterns and one of the things that was key with the city was what was going to happen to the uh, five-way intersection that you can't see that's uh, uh, behind the camera there but that was a concern with the amount of traffic that the Y was going to create and uh, one of the remedies for that was to relocate uh, a small portion of Stonehouse Lane that's what this cut is right right here um, that's why those trees had to come down and the the grass that we're actually standing on is actually going to be city property. It's already been uh, deeded back to the city. You talked about the cornfields. Anybody who's lived in Keene a long time, whether it's down by the old, uh, by um, 
off 101, or the way Menominee Place is, and even here. Cornfields and Keene have a habit of flooding out. How are you going to handle that, this area? Well, this, um, if, I don't know if you ever come out here in the winter. I cross country ski and bike out here a lot. Um, there is some standing uh, water that's been here, and we went through the whole wetland process, but um, there is water that is diverted. And what you see here in this sandy area here is actually a small retention pond that will return to a wetland. There, there will be uh, reeds and stuff that will grow in there. And once it returns to a wetland, it can't be touched anymore. So that um, there has been um, means for the water to be diverted. And there's actually another small swale that's going to be on the other side of the new entrance to the Y, which is off to my left here. Um, just uh, shortly past where uh, Stonehouse Lane is going to come in, where those trailers are is actually going to be the main entrance off of Summit, Summit Road. So. When we were talking about you two years ago, we were here for the groundbreaking. You've been working on it four to five years. When I came back to Keene almost 10 years ago, it was looking at putting on the railroad property. But somehow, to me, this looks like this is going to be a much better location. But some people have concerns being away from downtown. How do you think people are going to get here? How do you, what have you been hearing from the people? We went out and we surveyed our membership and we did a community needs assessment. And I'm one of the few people, I work downtown and I walk to the Y all the yeah. time, but it's not about me. Yeah. Most of the people want easy access to the Y. And there's a whole population that we're not serving that Liz spoke about before that can't just find a parking space and walk to the Y. So we're, we're missing half the market right now because of access. So yeah, parking was key for us. I live, you're talking about, I live on Grove Street and I have to either walk or take my bike because there's only about 20 parking, 20, 30 parking spots. Now as Railroad Street has been developed, more and more of those prop, pot spots are being leased by people in Railroad and where do your people get to, how your clients get into the Y with a parking? The Y only has six parking spots, actually. And the other spots you spoke of are all city spots and very difficult to come by. Um, the number one reason, the results of our member survey told us that the number one reason people leave the Y, have left the Y over the last few years, hasn't been because of the building, which as you know, you know, it's, it's, an, old building. it's an old building. Um, it isn't because of programming or staff, it's because of parking. And, you know, when I moved to Keene eight years ago, my children were one in three and we, you know, took swim lessons. And, you know, I remember crossing Roxbury Street with two babies or toddlers in my arms in January. And it just, it isn't a fun or a safe thing safe. to do. And this is going to be so much better. Um, people in the surrounding community, it's the Keene Family YMCA, but we really serve Cheshire County. And for members of our community who live outside of Keene, getting to the downtown location um, is very challenging. This will be much easier for them. Okay, well, I want to thank you for your time. And we'll be out here a couple of more times. And so basically, hopefully, have a, a time lapse as the construction goes. Be great. Oh, one, one other thing. <laughs> How glad are you that you're starting now, right before the rain, the in the winter than waiting a year from now. It's perfect timing yeah. and uh, we uh, <coughs> sometimes you know, things get made up for. We, we're having one of the driest summers we've had in a long time and uh, that's a big help to what they're doing out there now. Um, you know, imagine three weeks of rain or the summer we had last summer then trying to do this would have been a lot harder. Okay, again I want to thank you. Thank and you, And so Chris. we're going to go down to the other end. We're going to take a shot and that we, we use that as a base shot for every couple of weeks so people can see how it's going. And you were talking about in a couple of more weeks when we come back, they'll have the foundations getting ready to pour the foundation. Great. Right. Thanks, Chris. Thank, Thank you. you. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay, can you explain to the public from this view what we're doing? Sure, we're uh, looking back now. We're at the uh, actual southwest corner of the parking lot uh, looking almost right into the building. We're going to be looking at the child care wing of the building. Um, the building's in three pieces, as you'll see a little more uh, later. And uh, the portion uh, closest to us, I says, is child care. And then we have uh, a knuckle that connects it to the main gymnasium and then another knuckle 
that will connect the, the building to the, uh, the two pools. Uh, and uh, the locker rooms are in between there. So you, um, the building is going to have a very nice southern exposure. It's going to uh, have quite a bit of solar gain. Uh, it'll have sun on it uh, uh, most of the day and, and days in New England when we do have the sun, which uh, so far is, is turning out to be pretty good so far this year. One of the things you can say about construction and team, they take care of the environmental impact, the environmental of saving energy. It's, um, it, it was a, a very tough call in this building. We have a, a building that complies with the current energy code, um, but we also had working against that the request of uh, our members and a lot of people that um, we surveyed is they wanted to go into a fitness facility that had a lot of windows in it. And no matter how tight you make the shell and the roof, every time you have a piece of glass, um, that's pretty hard to insulate. So. Um, we, we don't have the tightest building in the world, but we have a very functional building, certainly a huge improvement on, on where we came from. But a, a big part of a fitness center is getting people to exercise, and a lot of people don't like to go into a fitness center for the programs. And uh, we heard over and over again, boy, it would be so much easier if I could see outside when, uh, uh, when I'm working out. So uh, yeah, the, the current why? All you get to do is stare at walls or one, one TV that's always on ESPN. Yeah, no, they, there's, uh, and being that we're in uh, this part of West Keene and the beautiful views all around us, uh, uh, we're very happy with the way this, the, the architect laid out this building and the combination between the barn-like structure of the building and the glass that's in there, uh, it's going to be beautiful. And as we were walking up, and you talked about the child kiss. Your goal for the child care center is to be open for next school in August? Uh, the end of August. We want to be open right uh, time with the school year for uh, September of 2011. So uh, it, things stay on schedule. Um, and you know, this is barring any catastrophe with a, you know, with a monsoon that, you know, it, it's wet for a month. Uh, uh, we're looking at that part of the building opening first, and then the balance of the building would be open uh, the end of September of 2009. Okay, I want to thank you for your time today, and Thanks, we'll be Chris. back here in a couple of weeks to see the progress. Great, thank you. Yep, thank you. We're back now, and in, back into studio, and I think the people will enjoy it, and we'll do this a couple of more times so we can see how it's progressing. Mm -hmm. And I think what you were talking about, Bob, in, in about a week or two, they'll start getting ready to pour the foundation. Yes, uh, we're getting pretty close. There's a whole process with the submittals uh, for the steel structure that has to be approved by ARC, who is the architect for the building, and uh, we're about a week away from actually having uh, the forms excavated to start pouring concrete. And in, in that whole time, we're going to still continue with the site work prior to concrete, but uh, it, it, the days are getting nearer. So. <laughs> and we just before we talked about the vision, but with a vision, you still need money. Mm -hmm. And I was in the White this morning, and I noticed that you've got about $10 million. You have about three, 400 donors so far. Mm -hmm. You had, could you list some of your larger donors so far? Um, I, I'm not sure we'll name our larger yeah. donors, but um, we have had very generous support mm -hmm. from, you know, as you mentioned, we have 377 donors. Uh, businesses, individuals, and foundations all in the area who have supported the project. Um, so it's really, this is the largest, most ambitious capital campaign, campaign that our community has ever experienced. Um, so it's been wonderful to see um, the dollars that have come in and our goal beginning in January when we launch the final phase of the True Wide Community Campaign will be to bring an increased number of donors. Um, early on in the campaign, the level of gifts that, that were being asked for were um, much higher than what we are expecting community members to contribute today. Yeah, because <clears throat> you're, you're a United Way mm -hmm. organization right. funded by the United Way, so now you're in a, in a blackout period, yes. so that's why you're talking about January? Right. Um, Every fall, the United Way has their active campaign, and receiving organizations are asked not to conduct their own fundraising efforts. 
Um, so technically the blackout ends December 1st, but December is kind of a hard time to launch anything with the holidays and everything. So in January we will launch the final phase of the campaign to bring in the remaining. Right now our gap is $2.1 million. And when I was looking at it, you had different levels. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I didn't see anything about the, um, the small donors. Sometimes people want to do $5, 10 $15. Right. They're going to be more than welcome? Yes. I, I think the message now is we have $2.1 million this, to, to go. Um, this is a very important community project. And so those who can make more of a commitment, maybe a pledge of $2,000 over four years, so that would be $500 a year. We strongly encourage that level of donor to really think about the impact that this Y will have on our community for generations to come. Um, and think about their gift relative to the importance of the project. Having said that, we welcome donations of any size. I mean, I, you know, we sort of jokingly say we'll take anything from a, a dollar to a million, whatever you're willing to do. And it's just important that people recognize that everyone has the opportunity to participate, and we really need everyone's support if this is going to be successful. And Bob, you had talked about. Um because you've got the, the loan from the federal government, you had to change how you was going to fund or, I mean, uh, bid out the project? It required a, a general bidding process. We were previously in a construction management agreement with McMillan, so we had to go back and change the architectural plans and specifications and um, request um, RFQs from all different contractors. We had 19 different contractors, actually. Um, that submitted uh, their uh, records for us to look at, and we narrowed that field down to a, uh, nine different contractors that actually bid on the project. And was there financial savings with the new way? Uh, yes, there was a, a considerable savings um, in that process. It's probably, it's public record, it's uh, yep. a little less than uh, $2 million savings from January of 2009 until the bids were opened in, in August of 2010. So the economy um, made things pretty competitive out there, and there were a lot of uh, contractors that really wanted to bid on this job and gave it their best price. And we were fortunate enough to have McMillan actually win the general bid, uh, which gave us um, uh, assurance that there is no loss in continuity on the project. They've spent quite a few, few years now with these plans and have uh, uh, a good comfort zone in, in what we're building out there. It's uh, not the simplest building in the world and uh, that gave us some additional security. Plus two million is a heck of a lot easier to raise than four million. Yes. Yes. Makes a difference. <laughs> and we always have in a lot of places, NIMBY, not in my backyard, How's the relationship with, with your neighbors out there? It's good. Yeah, yeah there's, um, there's a lot of excitement. Um, we uh, have people constantly walking by the project, and they, they come over and they say, I can't wait to see the new Y here. Um, we've had a couple of minor issues. It's been a, one of the driest summers on record. You saw the dust that was there when we were out there two weeks ago. So uh, we've had a couple of... Uh, homes that uh, need to be pressure washed from the dust and McMillan's done a tremendous job of now going in and hydro seeding the area that uh, um, was creating the dust and uh, maybe a little help from Mother Nature. Um, they, they've been out watering it to keep things from going and now a little rain coming in that will that will help even further. So, I, And also I think when the board and the staff at the time um, made the original sort of uh, inquiry into the site on Summit Road. They did um, some community awareness events um, and held, I think, a couple That's of correct. Yeah. forums to really find out what the concerns were in the neighborhood and um, you know, to mitigate, hopefully, any of those issues that might come up. So I think there was a nice partnership from the beginning. Um, people who've lived in that neighborhood for a while have been expecting that the Y you know, would be there soon, um, and so it really wasn't a surprise. What about the concerns about traffic, heavy traffic? Mm -hmm. That was a big concern from the city. 
um, and uh, part of getting through uh, the planning board process was for the Y to mitigate the, tr the traffic issue, which is mainly the, the five-way intersection. And part of the project is that the Y is relocating uh, Stonehouse Lane. I think we looked at the cut yeah. where that's going to go to create a four-way intersection that's going to be much safer. Um, we hired um, a traffic specialist to come in. It was part of the planning board submittal and they looked at the number of cars that would be out there. And this was on top of CNS's expansion at the time. So they've gone well beyond what the needs are going to be for the, the facility at 200 Summit Road. So it was looked at in a lot of detail. Mm -hmm. The Y's always had a, a close working relationship with the middle school. Mm -hmm. Do you expect to continue a relationship with the middle school once the Y is done? I think so. I mean, as you know, the middle school is going to be down the street from the new Y, um, so it will be nice to continue to have that option. I think one thing that will change is that the middle school as a facility will have many more options than it does presently on Washington Street. Um, but we are currently um, at our existing facility doing a big push to welcome more 6th, 7th, and 8th graders. In fact, we have a program called the 6th Grade Initiative, which gives free Y memberships to 6th graders. And it's something that's just being rolled out right now. Middle schoolers are starting to learn about it. Um, we have recently hired someone to focus on our youth programs and our youth um, leadership development in the future. And so we anticipate continued opportunities for that population. And, and you've um, <clears throat> partnership with the Cheshire Medical Center mm -hmm. on 2020, the wellness? Yes. The Cheshire Medical Center has been a huge champion and uh, collaborator in this effort. Um, you know, they've contributed volunteers to our um, efforts and, and also uh, they've pledged a, a donation toward the new building. They actually are going to have an office or access to an office in near our wellness, the youth wellness area, um, so that we can really work on offering cardiac rehab and um, you know programs that they have the expertise but not the space in their current facility. So when you talk about cardiac <coughs> rehab, mm -hmm. normally that's much more closer to the elderly. We were talking a little bit in the mm -hmm. video. Could you um, elaborate on some of the partnership you're going to have with Cheshire Medical and the elderly? I, I think some of those are still in development. And in addition to Cheshire Med, we've had conversations with um, other organizations that really work very closely and effectively with the elderly. Um, so we will continue to explore those collaborations. What exactly it looks like, I'm not certain at this point. It's um, something that that our executive director has been involved in. Um, but I think it, it's just really important to say that the new facility will be accessible to anyone with limited mobility, including the elderly. Um, our swimming pool at 38 Roxbury Street is, I mean, if, if you are using a walker or in a wheelchair, you Can't cannot make it. make it to the pool. Um, the new pool will be accessible. And I think the indoor walking track, it will have, will have an elevator in the new building up to the second floor walking track. I envision many of our elderly community members using that space in the winter, especially. The, um, <clears throat> yeah, because the elderly like to walk at the mm -hmm. but in the winter, you get all the young kids running around and right. everything, so that could be quite an inconvenience yeah. at times. Yeah. Um, one of the important things in, in Keene is affordable daycare. Mm -hmm. You're really putting an emphasis on daycare in the new way? Absolutely. Uh, I think it, it might make sense to step back just for a minute. Okay. For I know you're a member of the Y. You're in there you're, all the time, so you see what we offer, but there might be some people who don't know what the Y does, or maybe they've had very limited experience. There are four key programs that we focus on at the Keene Family YMCA. They are aquatics, child care, fitness, and something that we call community collaboration, which is some of the things that we've touched on already, but it, it's basically being a collaborative, collaborative partner 
in our community and working with agencies um, that might have access to or relationships with um, you know constituents that we would like to better serve so aquatics um, in the new Y we will have you know we talked about just the accessibility it'll be on the first floor people will be able to get to the pool the six lane pool will be um, competition size so that our swim team can have a home um, you know a place for their home meets in addition we'll have a therapy pool um, which can be used either for baby toddler swim lessons or um, rehabilitative type activities um, in the pool and then there will be a jacuzzi <laughs> hot tub for relaxing or you know again for therapeutic um, issues so we expect um, and plan to really expand expand our offerings in this area in the new Y um, and grow our swim team I guess 10 or 15 years ago we had I don't know maybe 200 members on our swim team and I think we're down to I don't know maybe 50 now and part of it is that we just don't have you know we can't practice in our pool um, and then be prepared for meets because it isn't a competition size um, child care is another very important area in the current Y and it will continue to be in the new Y we will be able to expand our offerings um, grow our program by it's almost 50 percent and we currently have a waiting list for some of our programs we have um, currently we have infants um, two toddlers and then two preschool classes and we will continue to offer those in the new facility we'll just be able to include more children because we'll have the space for it so that will be wonderful and many of the children in our program um, receive funding um, assistance from the state and or the federal government and that certainly affordable quality child care is something that is so important to parents and to employers because you know you want your employees to have options for their children um, so that was when we did our early feasibility studies that was an area that came up over and over continue to offer high quality affordable child care and expand it and so that's what we will do um, the third area is fitness and I think many people think I mean you're probably one who thinks of the why is fitness because that's how you use it and you know, that's a big piece of our mission and what we do and our hope is that in the new facility we will be able to invite even more people into you know the umbrella of wellness and fitness and making good choices and um, you know building our our mission is building strong kids strong families and strong communities and I think we can insert strong adults in there I mean if we're strong and healthy our community is strong and healthy so it's it's very important and um, you know we'll have additional opportunities for fitness classes because we'll have more space um, we'll have a full court basketball um, area and gymnastics the indoor walking track we talked about so lots of opportunities on the fitness level um, and then the final piece that's really important is the community collaboration and we've designed the building so that it's very welcoming and open and we want all members of our community to feel like they have a home at the Y and right when you walk in the lobby is going to be um, you know just spacious and there will even be a fireplace in there to encourage people to you know sit and connect and um, you know be part of a community we're going to have a nice community room which nonprofits um, can use to hold board meetings or workshops etc and we'll have a great kitchen um, again to accommodate some of those uses and you know we hope that we really will be able to further expand the connections we have with Big Brothers Big Sisters MFS MDS you know all organizations that we have worked very closely with at various levels over the you know the past decades really and in the new why we think those relationships will be expanded so it will be great it, it's going to sound like <clears throat> my daughter lives in Winneska Georgia mm -hmm. and they built a new why but the city also built a community center they share the same place mm -hmm. and so 
it's no duplication of effort. Right. I think we, we don't have, I, I know of other communities, Nashua, I, actually not Nashua, Exeter, um, is building a new Y, and it's in conjunction with the city, and it's, you know, a com the city's yeah. community space. Um, I think those of us at the Y envision the Y being that same space. It just won't be a separate, yeah. and, but of course it is a membership structure, yeah. um, but we have sliding scales of membership to meet the needs of all income levels. Um, we don't deny anyone service to the Y based on inability to pay. We're not going to leave you out, Bob. Oh, no, let's, 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 let's talk about some of the construction and the um, technical parts. you have anything that you want to bring up? I do, but I just want to back up just a little bit. The, um, we went all over the country looking at YMCAs before starting on this project, and a lot of the building committee, um, Bob Clarkson went up to actually to Michigan, up to Grand Rapids, and looked at a LEED certified green YMCA. George Scott went up to Maine and looked at all the new Ys that were built up there. I went out to Ohio and looked at three or four Ys in Cincinnati, plus all the Ys that we could find in Massachusetts. And we saw a lot of recurring themes that, and the, the biggest one, and we saw this almost everywhere, was most Ys opened with inadequately sized wellness centers. And when their memberships increased, which almost they all do right off the bat, all of a sudden they had to expand their, their wellness center. So we are opening this Y with almost 5,000 square feet mm -hmm. in our wellness center, which will take us beyond what our pro forma membership goals are. It's going to be a beautiful center. It, it is actually, uh, as you walk into the lobby, um, it, the climbing wall goes up uh, through the lobby and into the wellness center there, so you can actually uh, go around. There's a balcony around part of it, and then the main part of the wellness center looks out over the swimming pool and the bleacher area for the pool as well. Um, the other area that uh, we also have um, is there are two group exercise studios that are built on the uh, west side of the building with a lot of glass looking out so uh, we don't have that indoor claustrophobic feeling that um, re reminds us of the old Y, but we have that. And in addition, we have uh, two combination squash racquetball courts. Um, there's a sliding glass wall that's in the front of the court, front being as you enter, not w what you hit at. <laughs> and, that, um, it, and that was, uh, you know, we have a, an existing membership that does play racquetball. There's been a lot of interest um, out of the high school for squash, so we thought it was important to continue that um, in the new Y. And then um, your question in terms of the construction, um, we were on a limited budget, um, and it was um, a complete brick and mortar building, kind of like the building we're in right now, um, in the size range that we were going to, about 67,000 square feet, was off the charts. Uh, in terms of uh, what it would cost for us to build that building. So we looked to the architect to come up with something creative uh, to do that, and we are using a metal framed building. It's a, uh, a steel structure with a stress skin panel on it, highly insulated uh, with a metal roof, and that's connected in two areas by conventionally framed knuckles. So we have three different metal buildings essentially joined by the, t the two knuckles. And uh, um, it's um, just as strong as any building, but the cost savings were, were tremendous, and it has the life of any building as, as well. So that, uh, that was a big challenge going forward in, in that site. Um, <clears throat> a lot of people still think of metal buildings like old aircraft hangars, just an ugly building. What are you doing to get rid of that ugliness that it's in perception in people's head? Well, the architect spent a lot of time, and we spent a lot of time with, with uh, the City of Keene's planning board that had that same concern. And there's, uh, there's glazing in it. Um, the panel that's on the front of the building has more of a barn-like look to it. Um, there'll be a gazebo uh, or a portico that connects the building um, entrances together that will add a little bit of a wood element to it. The concrete portion that comes out of the uh, the ground um, has a masonry uh, front to it, so it's going to soften up that, that building. It's not going to look like a warehouse, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but it's going to look like a fairly modern building for Keene standards, but a little bit with a farm-like um, twist to it. So we're, we're very excited about that. 
Yeah, because when you look at a lot of buildings, people spend so much money on the outside appearance, they really have nothing inside. Right. We had the, the challenge of getting all the programming we had over at 38 Roxbury Street to fit into this new, new building, as well as a regulation size pool and an additional therapy pool as well. So the square footage got gobbled up very, mm -hmm. very quickly. And so we talked about in the film, you expect to be, <coughs> excuse me, you expect to be, you want to be open before school starts next year. Uh, the, the timeline is to have childcare open in August of 2011 with the Y to follow in the following month of September. So mm -hmm. the, the so childcare is, is key yeah. To, yeah. to the school cycle. So by October 1st, if everything goes right, all construction stuff is off, punch list is gone, and you have a completely functional building? We're That's confident. The yeah. <laughs> you know, there's uh, the unknowns, weather. We've had a great start, uh, not for the farmers, but for, for doing construction in the summer. It's, you know, the driest summer we've had in 10, 12 years. So um, we haven't been hindered by weather to this point, but we still have the winter ahead of us. And, but I, I trust and the, the, we all hope that, and we know McMillan will, will do everything they can. They want to fast track this building and get it open on, on schedule. So. And let's talk about the, one of the major issues that you had in your current, you have in your current why parking mm -hmm. in Keene that always seems to be a parking whether it's the railroad property or whatever parking always kinds of put an end to a lot of projects we're going from having well we have five parking spaces now to 150 uh, free parking spaces in, in front of the Y also with a separate entrance for child care to make it convenient uh, for families dropping off young children so that they're not circling around I, I remember uh, when my daughter was in um, the uh, child care program, it was sometimes more stressful trying to get her at the end of the day than it was going down to Logan Airport to right. pick somebody up. <laughs> it's crazy. So it, I mean, there are times, you know, when it would be dark and the weather would be bad and trying mm -hmm. to park illegally across the street and, and run in and get her. It, all that stress will be gone. So we're mm -hmm. Also for the parents, the stress of trying to go across the street because, what, three, four years ago, you had that serious accident, yeah. that young girl broke, broke her was it her leg when she got hit I by a car? So, yeah. Yes. And <clears throat> so now you have a, a lot of safety features put in. Right. And you never hear about all the close calls. That, no. <laughs> right. well, I've had a couple of close calls, but I've been able to run quicker. Been, right. <laughs> and I've seen parents kind of like dragging their kids mm -hmm. just so they, they won't get hit, yeah. even though it's supposed to be 30 miles an hour. Right. We've also had preliminary conversations uh, with uh, the, the school bus program. And uh, so there is already a bus that goes to that area, and uh, we have to go back and revisit it. It's been a couple of years, but they were mm -hmm. talking about actually doing the, the drop-off at the Y. They think that might be a safer spot than actually dropping off at the four-way intersection. So hopefully there will be mm -hmm. bus service from the middle school, and I'm not sure and about other the high schools, school. Even the elementary schools. And the Y has a bus as well, mm -hmm. and with that we pick up for the after-school program. So. The, um you're going to have a, a pretty big area. Are you going to have any outdoor programs, especially in the summer? It's, um, you know, you look at that space and it's 10.1 acres, and uh, unfortunately the building, <laughs> the parking lot, and the wetlands control, um, like we pointed out the, the catch basins that were there, chews up most of that 10.1 mm -hmm. acres. There are a couple of areas. There is a playground that's off of uh, the child care space, and there is some green space uh, to the front of the lot. Um, unfortunately, it's not big enough for a ball field, but there is some room there. So I'm sure yeah. in Y Spirit that will get used mm -hmm. somehow. Yeah, there will be space, I think, from the beginning for, you know, the, the camps and the child care areas to run around outside and play tag. But as Bob said, it's amazing how quickly 10.1 acres gets yeah. gobbled up. <laughs> 200 by 200. It, right. It's not yeah, a lot of space. It isn't, yeah. And um, <clears throat> so are there any other issues that you'd like to talk about before? I think we've covered most, most of it. I mean, I think the, the important thing for the community to know is that we're going to have a fabulous building. We are going to be able to expand our programming and, um, you know, in many cases offer more choices at better hours for, you know, a variety of schedules. Um, but also the community needs to know that we need to raise $2.1 million. And um, 
you know, when the early planners embarked on this, everyone knew it was a very ambitious goal. Um, but the Y has been serving our community for 125 years. It, the first Y opened in 1885, not on Roxbury Street, on West Street. Um, and, you know, we hope this building serves our community for another 125 years. And when you look at it that way, you recognize the importance of being a part of it, helping to make it happen, and, you know, in many cases that means stepping up to the plate with a monetary contribution. And um, if anyone is interested, um, you know, in, in January we will be kicking off the final phase. Um, there are many prospective donors who have been asked already and are kind of in, in process, and those donors can come forward and make their gifts if they'd like. We got permission from the United <laughs> Way to continue with those who were kind of in place. Um, but it, it's just really important that we all participate um, because, you know, the Y needs all of our support in order to make it happen. When we open the, new do the doors of the new Y, we don't want to have so much debt that we're spending our resources servicing that debt instead of hiring new staff and, you know, focusing on member services. So it, it's, it's critical. Concord, I don't know if <clears throat> Concord had a really good why, mm -hmm. <clears throat> but didn't they have a lot of debt problems? I think I'm not, I, there's I'm not been sure. some that I know of that they built fantastic buildings, mm -hmm. but like you said, they spent a lot of their resources serving, right, right. The, servicing yeah. the debt. Well, we've heard lots of horror stories about other communities that were way over leveraged and we're not, um, we don't want to find ourselves in, in those situations because then it, it makes it very difficult to really provide the programming um, that the community wants. Yeah, to defeat your purpose, you either have to cut program or you have to raise membership dues. Right. And that, and that you, cuts some people out. That, so. that cuts some people out. Yeah. <clears throat> and you had talked about going up, was Mich well, you had one individual go up to Michigan or was it Ohio for the Leeds um, building? Uh, Michigan. And <clears throat> in Keene, with the uh, climate control, climate protection city, they're always talking about environmental, <clears throat> how we're going to do it, how these buildings are going to stay green. You touched in a few areas. Could you touch on a few other areas where you've done to stay green as much as possible? We're using a lot of LEED principles. <clears throat> we're not going to be a LEED certified building. Um, we have a budget and uh, as lead much as costs. We have, leads, lead mm -hmm. costs a lot of money. There's probably on a building that size probably about fifty to seventy five thousand just in administrative fees to get the certification. Um, we have a, a panel system that's very well insulated, but we also have a lot of glass as well because the, we listened to what our members wanted and we wanted a place where people could exercise where they didn't feel like they were crammed in a basement. So we had to balance that to do it. Um, we have uh, a lot of uh, efficient light fixtures. There are rebates that we were getting from PSNH for using those fixtures, um, for using, uh, you know, current technology, but we also left an area that there is room to grow. If we decide we want to add solar panels as a separate unit later on, we might go down that road. But um, Initially, we used the best principles we could for the money and uh, also gave the, the membership what they were looking mm -hmm. for. I think another thing to point out, our current building at 38 Roxbury Street is 57,000 square feet. Only 31,000 square feet of it is usable, but we're heating all of it. Um, the new building is going to be 65,000. 67. 67, with 65 of it being usable, I believe. So. Just from an efficiency point of view, going from the old building to the new building, even though we're not in a financial position to do the LEED certification and all of that, we are going to be much more efficient, be able to serve more people in a building that is only a little bit bigger um, in terms of you know total square footage. And when you talk about <clears throat> the LEED program, um, can you explain what LEED is to the, to the people? It's an energy uh, certification that um, they're all different levels, bronze, silver, gold, and depending on how 
type the building is, um, you can get different levels of certification. It's not um, completely intuitive. You would think that a gold certified LEED building might have very low energy costs, and that's not always true. The Grand Rapids, why that uh, Bob Clarkson looked at, had humongous energy costs, but they had spent a lot of money on other details in the building that still got them that certification. So it's um, it, it's not completely linear in terms of how they, they rate it. Yeah, because when I lived in Irvine, California, they had some of the LEED buildings, but you got LEED certification because they had bike racks, they had locker right. rooms, they and showers. They recycle or whatever. Yeah. <clears throat> and so that really had nothing to do mm -hmm. with energy efficiency because they were saving the energy by not driving the car. Right. And, and we will have bike racks at the new Y, too. So. <laughs> and the, the other one, I think a lot of the LEED buildings are government buildings. For example, when we're spending the money to get the, um, the correctional facility LEED certified, whether people want to hear it or not, we're going to tax the people whatever is necessary to pay off that bond. Mm -hmm. You don't have that luxury. You have to go and say, hey, what is the return on our investment? And if the return on the investment isn't worth it, you just don't put it in for the sake of putting it in. That's correct. Our, our, you know, our primary initiative <coughs> is to get all the programming in the building and to get the right child care numbers that we needed. And uh, the reason the USDA gave us the loan was because of the programming um, that we're going forward with. And that, you know, that was tough to juggle that, and it would be great to have had spent money on, you know, more solar panels and a tighter envelope and, uh, you know, a wood pellet plant, but we would have been missing a lot of the programming that we're, we're offering. So um, here, I, it, without an unlimited source, um, mm -hmm. we had to make some tough decisions. As much as I would love to have a, a building that was completely uh, as energy efficient as it, it could be, we, we don't have that luxury. And as we're getting ready to wrap up, everything membership, the cost of membership. I remember about seven years ago when I joined the Y because I was a member of Gold's Gym, and then I realized I just went to the Y and I go, holy crap, I can put my whole family on the Y membership and still save about $40 a month mm -hmm. what I was spending at Gold's Gym. Yeah. The, the Y <coughs> memberships are very competitive, um, I think. You know, more we than are, competitive. Yeah, more than competitive. And we don't anticipate that rates will go up much in the new Y. I think the numbers I've seen in the pro forma are, you know, a $2 increase um, for family memberships. So, you know, we're, we're really, our whole point is to serve the community and make it um, an option for as many families as possible. And, you know, when times are challenging, Gym memberships are often the first thing to go, but frankly, it's you know what m many families could use to create healthy environments for themselves. So, and the sliding scale program is yes. still going to remain yes. for you know families that make between thirty and fifty-five thousand dollars, I right. believe, in income. There will still be a reduction on the membership fees. Yeah. And little one, the YMCA and the YWCA. There's still a few of those around. Mm -hmm was formed as part of a religious organization, rooming houses, boarding houses. <clears throat> Is there still a religious connection with Y's? Um, the Y actually officially nationally changed its name from the YMCA, um, the Young Men's Christian Association, to the Y. We did this in July. Um, there is no direct, um, you know, affiliation with with any religious organizations. It's just because they're a community organization. Exactly. I mean, we do not discriminate um, against anyone based on religion, gender, sex, any of those issues. So, yeah, so we are the why. <laughs> so I'm pretty sure a lot of people in the community are just waiting for your, your grand opening. Yes. And you'll, you'll enjoy your grand opening too. Oh, very much so. Yeah, and I think another thing, it, it's in the works, but in January when we launch, off, when we launch our, the final phase of our community campaign, we will have kind of a, a midterm celebration at that point where we will invite the community out, hopefully to the site, and have a little celebration 
um, and we might be at the point where we will be ready to raise the roof. So that would be a great thing to do with the community. And hopefully in January it's not 20 below and right. you have three or four feet well, of snow. Well, we can bundle up, have some hot chocolate. <laughs> okay. I want to thank you for both of you for coming, and it's pretty informational. Um, we should be out there in, again, a couple of weeks, and we'll give, keep progress going. Even if we don't have you here, we can maybe do a 10, 15-minute um, segment, and we'll yeah. just let the community... Um, Go and see how yeah. the progress is coming. That would be great. Thank you, Chris, Thanks, so much Chris. for having us here. Thank you for coming mm -hmm. and hope you didn't like flubs every now and then. But That's all right. <laughs> but we've got to get the information out. Yeah. And I want to thank you. And um, next week we're going to have the 2020 vision from Cheshire Medical Center. And we should follow that up with the Keene High School and the Ed Board of Education's wellness program. Great. And so thank you. Refreshments provided by G. Housen Distributors. Premium beverages delivered.